flash presentation. So the next one, I know what the slide look like. So it's a pleasure for me to introduce uh, one of, of the, the one student of our lab, so Kim Jal, that is working on our omics application. And today she will uh, discuss lipid profiling of both tainted and untainted peak serum using multidimensional chromatography and exploratory study. Kim Jal, the floor is yours. Thank you, Bigesh. Hello, everyone. I'm Kindrel, and today I would like to talk about identification of botent in peak serum uh, based on its lipid profile using GCTC. So before we begin, first of all, what, uh, what is botent and what is the need of having an analytical method for it? So botent is something uh, is a unpleas strong unpleasant smell and taste which is released from the meat when you cook or heat, uh, and it's uh, from the pig. So meat industry up till now have a standard or traditional practice to do castration of uh, male piglets. And the sad part is uh, it is done without anesthesia or anesthesia, and it causes a great pain to them. And therefore, animal welfare showed its concern and um, uh, EU guidelines, ethical guidelines were established that this should be prohibited by 20, 2018. However, we are far from this objective to achieve, like we haven't achieved this objective successfully yet. Uh, but um, keeping the uh, meat industry in the center that they have to fulfill the guideline, but at the same time satisfy their customer by providing high quality of the meat because no one likes to have that unpleasant smell or taste in that meat. And therefore, we need to ha uh, have more accurate analytical methods which can detect this boat end. So um, obviously, some background work has been done in this field. Uh, the known molecules for boat end are androsterone, sketol, and indole. And usually, for doing such analytical uh, analysis, uh, the, the preferred sample is the back fat of the pea. And um, the current method in industry is that uh, the people will be, uh, there are spe uh, specific um, uh, men who are standing uh, next to the meat, heating it, uh, smelling it, and giving a score that how much it is like having a bad smell. So basically, it's a sensory evaluation by human nose, and it is done upon heating the meat. What we are trying to do over here is we are trying to use, first of all, uh, a different type of sample, which is not back fat. It is a serum sample. And we are trying to see the lipid profile of it uh, uh, and investigate using GCTC whether we can differentiate this boat end or not. Uh, if in case I run out of time and I'm not able to go in depth in the information, this is a published work, so please have a look afterwards. So the aim of the study is uh, to optimize the sample preparation method, which is uh, able to analyze the lipids. When I say lipids, here is the mostly the fatty acids we are focusing on, and uh, to have a, a method which can help us to do that. And after that, uh, to amplify, uh, to use that method to detect this potent. When we talk about GC, obviously the derivatization becomes essential. Obviously, it also depends on the type of sample metrics that you are using. Uh, the, this uh, derivatization protocols keeps changing. If you are analyzing food, the same cannot be applied to the biological sample. And even in biological sample, it can vary from urine to plasma or serum. So a systematic comparative study was done uh, in which uh, uh, Ostermalen group in Germany and uh, compared the commonly used six protocol and compared them. On the x-axis, you can see that the saturated fatty acid and you have 10 different class of fatty acids. It's very essential to have a protocol which is not creating discrimination towards specific classes of lipids. And spe specifically, say for an example, if you see for omega-3, which are as such present in a lower abundance. So it's very essential to uh, take care of those as well. Um, they concluded that the HCL and NUH plus BF3, these two protocols are efficient enough or suitable enough to conduct such studies. However, HCL uh, derivatization was far more complex. It involves steps like drying the sample and um, uh, centrifugation, etc. While if you try to follow the NUH plus BF3 two stage derivatization, uh, there is a possibility to make it fully automatized because if you have dual headset auto sampler with, which can facilitate two different series vo uh, volume, then um, you can make it completely automatized, which can reduce the 
human time as well as error introduced by us. So for the optimization of derivatization approach, uh, we obviously optimize the second approach, ch 3 o and and df 3 where the first stage, uh, first step is uh, adding the ch 3 o and which will help you to derivatize the bound form of plasma, while the second step will help you to derivatize the free fatty acids. Uh, one thing that I would like to highlight over here is we are just using 25 microliter of plasma, so it's really micro volume extraction. And uh, to optimize this time point and temperature, we used full factorial design. For the chromo uh, chromatographic condition, we were curious to see how these lipid molecules will interact with the thick and thickness of the column. Here we are using normal phase configuration, as you can see, but the film thickness is not the usual one that you will see when someone is doing lipid analysis. So this was done out of curiosity, and um, it helped us to remain the structured chromatographic separation. Um, on the second dimension column, it helped to uh, retain the analyzed data longer, so we weren't observing the wraparound effects. For the response optimization, we try to uh, select all the a, a representative from each individual classes, which were able to cover different classes of things. The interesting part is though those analytes were able to cover the entire range of first dimension retention time at the same time, second dimension retention time. And the optimized condition are highlighted uh, on the right side. And the composite desirability is 0.91. We were able to achieve that. And um, I, closer to one, better it is, and it's micro volume extraction of a biological sample. So I think it's uh, uh, acceptable. Uh, when we try to say the uh, structure chromatographic separation, uh, if someone uh, is not using GCGC, I will just explain it in a minute that on the first dimension, uh, on the x-axis on the first dimension retention time, uh, the separation occurs based on the volatility on second dimension based on the polarity since it's a normal column configuration. Uh, for the polarity as number of the double bond increases, the separation occurs. And the interesting part is uh, the omega-6 is uh, looting at an obtuse angle always before omega-3. So that helps us to recognize just by looking at the chromatograph. Yesterday we had lots of discussion about it, how it can help or not. We, uh, this is just to show that we also injected pain standard and need the reference sample uh, to have a better confidence for the identification of our, uh, our analytes. And um, coming towards the result part for the boat tank, we injected 40 serum samples and from uh, 20 were from the boat tented and 20 from untented. Just by the look of the area percentage contribution for the different uh, group of frames, uh, cholesterol and omega C were significantly increased in the bow tented peaks. Uh, we also conducted a systematic chemometric screening. Here are just a few examples. For the PCA, as you can see, the separation was occurring. For the volcano plot, it supported the same data uh, set that we are able to see in the area percentage contribution. We tried to connect the chemical information with the biological part. However, I here I acknowledge that the sample set is not that big enough. Since it was a part of exploratory study, we decided to go ahead and do it. Um, we conducted pathway analysis and quantitative enrichment analysis, and both of them suggested the same uh, uh, thing that there is a significant involve involvement of the linoleic acid metabol uh, metabolism pathway. So for the take home message, uh, from the analytical point of view, this is a micro volume extraction of fatty acids. Um, it is not, uh, it is optimized in a way that it doesn't create or uh, create any bias or discriminate any classes of veins. Um, uh, we are able to see the structure chromatographic separation, which is always ex uh, expected when we are doing such analysis. And uh, it helps us to do the untargeted analysis. Coming towards the boat end part, yeah, uh, so this was first of its kind of study conducted uh, using the serum sample and lipid profile for identifying the boat end. We, uh, we saw the uh, differences in the chemical uh, group like PUFA, omega-6 and in cholesterol were increased in boat end and other classes like SFA and omega-3 were increased in untented. However, the last point is my favorite one because we all, um, always think that or there are guidelines suggestions that uh, we should uh, feed peak which is having omega-3 nutritional 
fish value because at the end human is going to consume it and it will help human to have a good nutritional balanced diet but if you think other way around i'm like omega 3 there, there is some involvement of omega 3 maybe in this boar tent production so that i cannot why there is a question mark because it's just a small sample set 40 uh, we will uh, do more like with hundreds and then come up with like full stop but still it's an intriguing possibility to think about um with that uh thank you for your attention it's a published work if you feel like checking about it uh, it's an open access please do it thank you